praise God and father we thank you we thank you for your faithfulness we thank you for your kindness we thank you for your love where will we be if not for you what are we if not for you you've shown us mercy you've shown us your grace you've shown us your mercy we are the people that the Lord has helped we are the people that the Lord has helped who are we what are we if the God of Abraham the God of Isaac the God of Jacob had not been on our side thank you thank you for the many testimonies of your love for the demonstration of your power we are grateful oh God we are grateful 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 oh we are grateful oh God we are grateful we are grateful we are grateful we are grateful oh God thank you for the gift of righteousness thank you for mercy that prevails we are grateful amen hallelujah somebody say lord we're grateful the, the bible says if he had not been the lord which was on our side the god of abraham the god of isaac the god of jacob jehovah is his name we worship you we adore you you have not left us without a weakness oh yes you proved in our life again and again that you are too faithful too faithful we give you praise in jesus name praise the lord please you can have your seats glory to God all right praise God all right let's open our Bible to second Kings chapter 4 so before I start teaching do me a favor so this is remember that we're trying to close so all of you in the this is the fourth service in case you're here for the first time so um, you know in the fourth service we've been running a series a teaching series on dealing with relationship exhaustion and frustration so it's, it's a series that helps us to be in a better place that would enhance our marriage. Don't say relationship series. It's not a relationship series, though it touches it. Because what it does really, the, the focus of teaching is for you to become a healthier person. And when you become a healthier person, it affects your marriage, it affects your relationship. So it's not for singles, it's for everyone. And it's for those outside the relationship. Glory to God. And um, let me also say something to you. All of you that have, all of you on social media, I wanted to find the habit of sharing these messages. The reason why is that I'm going to start with what I preach about in the third service, something like that. And, you know, the reason why is that there's a lot of bad news. I was saying something in the third service. I said, one of the things that I want to do is to take the soul. And the way it takes the soul, because once you can control the mind, you can control the soul. Once you control the soul, you can control the life. Yeah. Yeah. Once you can control the mind, you can control the soul. Once you can control the soul, you can control the life. And how does it do it? Media is a big tool. Media is a big tool. So what am I asking? I'm asking all of you watching online, all of it. You must have the habit of using your media for content that is very good. And this is one of that content. So, you know, if you have a blog, you want to do a blog on it, refer them to the content. You want to share it on YouTube, on Instagram. All of you on Twitter, you can start doing a Twitter series and just say, you know, service with Pastor Bolaji and put a nice hashtag. And we all just, I think there's already an hashtag and we follow from there. Glory to God. All right. So did, did I say, let's start from Second Corinthians. Bring my, bring my, my glass again. Yeah. Yeah. There's something I said in the third, in the third service that really pertains to this mm. and I was I, 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 I'm talking about men today in the first second and third service I spoke about mentalities so I want to show you something about mentalities it's just the third point I want to talk about it's just the third point and the third point is this 
you know the third point is this why must you be careful about your mindset and mentality second corinthians chapter 11 verse 3 second corinthians chapter 11 verse 3 uh, we're going to read it yeah just put it exactly i think it's fine yeah yeah you want to put it here yeah that's fine good yeah yeah is it good that way is it balanced or oh, need some help all right second Corinthians 11 verse 3 we're going to read this from King James and most likely I can get for maybe amplified or message translation uh, let me look for which one said better amplified or message okay amplify says it better this one's amplified oh it does okay let's read from King James first so one of the things everybody look up here please your mind is very powerful you know why because your mind contains three things your will your emotions and what's the third one sorry your soul contains your soul contains your mind your will and your emotions the reason why the mind is very powerful is that number one or the soul is very powerful all information you receive from the spirit they go through the soul yeah because without the soul you will not know you've received information but also all the information that goes to your spirit also goes through the soul so what do i mean when you read something of the bible you have to understand it for it to go into your spirit this is this is where you understand where prophecy has problem when they say prophecy has problem this is where you have problem because when you receive prophecy you receive from a spiritual source then it goes into the soul but the soul is not perfect the soul is it depends the soul has emotions so when someone receives a prophecy and is not in a good emotional state that emotional state affects the prophecy so when it gives out the prophecy the senses it depends on that emotional state because of his emotion because the soul is where the prophecy can be tampered with that's why sometimes you know when someone say that's why someone says really that's what the bible says that when someone gives a prophecy in first corinthians it says those it said let there be two or three prophets that sit down and judge it why did they judge it because what they are judging is not the if it's from the spirit because if it's a prophecy from god from the spirit but what they are judging is a soulish element how has it been interfered with i'll give an example peter had a dream in the dream he saw food and he says he was going to eat the voice says eat and it says thou shalt not eat unclean things how many can remember that scripture question why did the dream of food because before he had the dream he was hungry when the message came in the spirit the message looked for whatever was relevant to the soul and used it to interpret it to him are you getting me this is first of all you must plan to attend the next level breakthrough school the one because i'm going to talk about spiritual guidance how to hear the voice of god how to miss it is it two days april 30th and 1st very powerful it's two nine hours every day of bible study you will grow spiritually in two days so the point this is the reason why you thought that you thought you had god to date him mm -hmm. the problem is this you see where i'm coming from now you heard rightly but your state of emotion will and mind when it enters that area there's distortion depending on what the state is it can affect what you hear what you don't hear so in the dream what you saw was that he was kind to you and he gave you cold water but in your mind you say wow i found the person that's going to help me in life as my helper as my marriage partner but maybe in your life he was meant to be a business partner but because your emotional state is that i want to marry you interpret that dream in light of marriage meanwhile it's meant to be a business partner are you hearing me so this is the reason why and it's not just for you even prophets even prophets prophets say i've seen something for example when you are, when you really want to see you eventually see what you want to see You will eventually see what you want to see. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. 
so I, I wanted to to say that to you so we're talking about the power of the mind so let me say this today when Satan wants to attack someone what Satan does is this when Satan wants to attack someone what Satan does is this he will begin to bring it will begin to bring negative thoughts to you to you, us we call it negative thoughts but really it's lying so Satan will lie to you who did he lie to he lied to Eve he says you will be like he knew they were already like God so he lied to him so what the lie of the devil becomes what we call negative what thoughts so you what he lies to you he lies to you and says that you're not beautiful enough nobody will marry you and when he lies to you you have the opportunity to buy it or not buy it so look at because why do you buy it or not buy it you buy it or not buy it in your mind see what the bible says let's go to the scripture now look at what the bible says second corinthians chapter 11 verse 3 see what the bible says paul says that there's something that makes me afraid why does it make him afraid he says all i thought you can be useless can be radically can be destroyed rather not you know useless is not the right that's not the right word to put that you know can be destroyed why it says less by any means do you see what it says it says there are different means which sitter can do this he can use a blog he can use your sister's experience he can use your breakup he can use anything to suggest this to you he says i fear by any means satan beguiled eve through his subtlety 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 so your mind be corrupted did you see what i'm saying so how do you know if it has worked your mind becomes what corrupted it's like a virus it introduces a virus into your programming so you will not be able to function well so let's read another translation which one do you read which one the passion translation give me the passion translation passion translation oh this is good okay see let's read together are you ready no you don't even sound ready are you ready i love you have i told you that recently i love you yeah you know someone asked me he said what informs the way you teach and i said i'm just tired of churches that are not helpful and pastors that are lazy that will not go the extra mile because this takes a lot from me in training in preparation in prayers you know um our hr lady was telling me she replied my text about 4 a.m what time, what time did i text you this morning yearly 3 a.m i texted him 3 a.m this morning he saw you he replied me by six o'clock or so seven o'clock you know i, I remember it because by 2 a.m i told one of our staff i need this today you know that kind of thing but that's how much it takes to prepare for the service because sometimes by 2 a.m i'm up you know i know that i slept you know i'm just slept just a few hours just to get here but i'm happy because um, i'm happy because the quality of life i see change from the story to share you know it's amazing and, and that's why i really get upset when you don't share your story because it's almost as if you're not grateful yeah it's almost as if you're not grateful so I'm, I'm really touched when you share the stories i'm really really touched because there's no job you can say i want to be a billionaire there's no goal of that for a pastor i mean some pastors want to become billionaires i, I wish them all the best you know i don't know how you want to work for non-profit for for, for for profits you know you're working for a non-profit for profit if you want to become a billionaire go to real estate you know you know i'm not saying it can be blessed but it can be the primary goal of a pastor to say i want to become the richest it's not even my dream i don't have such ambition when you have all the money, what is not easy to do? You can only sleep on one bed, in one house, drive one car at a time. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. Uh, you know, look at the lady that spoke last week. I don't know if she's here. She is. Stand. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, what did I tell you last week? I said, when she comes this week, she'll not be wearing black. The reason why is that even the black she wears is where she was emotionally. I told one of the, I'm not sure if it was you or someone, was, was, it, was you I told? I said, when she comes next week, I said, watch it. Nobody will tell her. Look, she's wearing white and blue. The reason why, that's how you know. The reason why that you think you choose colors. You don't choose colors. The colors choose you. When you're in a bad state, it's not all the time. When you're in a bastard, you find you gravitate towards very moody colors. But look at her today. 
you know, look at her. She's done her hair. She has white. She has blue. She looks great. Yeah. Hold on. Give her the microphone. So last week, you told me, last week you told me you cried. You told me you were tired of life. You were, your life was terrible. You were very depressed. How do you feel now? I feel better. I feel great. You feel better? <laughs> Praise God. And all you had to do was to focus on what was what? Working. Who noticed this? Who noticed it in a week? Did anybody to tell you that mm, you sound different? Maybe your child or, or someone say, Are you spending too much? Your working has changed. In the office. In the office? <clears throat> what did they tell you in the office? Like two or three people told me, This week you are very calm, you are not being aggressive. Look at that. And last week she was suicidal, she was depressed, she was breaking down. And look at that. And, and that's why we do what we do. You must always remember. That's why all of you watching online, that's why when I say invite your friends, it's not because we want to have a large church. It's just the fact that how many more people are like her? Is it until someone commits suicide, you'll say, I should have invited her? Thank you. God bless you. <laughs> Praise God. This week, I'm going to do something different. On your role, all of you are going to pick a role captain. Yeah. The reason why is this. The reason why is this. No matter what I teach, if you don't do, there'll be no change. So I need someone that will get all your numbers, put you guys in a WhatsApp group, and you guys will not be following up every day. The reason why is that teaching doesn't change people. It's applied knowledge that changes people. If you like, they should give you diets, print it for you in gold, and give it to you. If you don't apply yourself to diet, you will never lose weight. Yes. Praise God. So Second Corinthians chapter 11. I, I don't want to... I, Lord Jesus, please help me. I don't want to stay long today. Okay, so let me tell you what we're going to do. So prayerfully, we're going to have a seminar for there will be like three hours for ladies. Yeah, it, will be, it will be worship, prayers, you know, yeah, it will be worship, prayers. We're going to do that. You know, well, the only problem that we need the space because I'm thinking, what will we sit us? Should we use here? Should we use a bigger place? Because, you know, because we might have like 10,000 ladies, you know, that kind of thing, you know, you know, because you know how many people watch this online and are telling their friends? There's a lot of people. Okay, so thank you. Thank you for that spirit of faith. You work it out, yeah. So you work it out, yeah. Thank you for that. So, Sister John, she just said she'll work it out for us, yeah. So, see the power. So, listen to what I was saying. What does Satan do when he wants to destroy someone? He will lie to them. The lie becomes what? A negative thought. See what it does. See, let's read together. I want to go. But now I'm afraid that just as Eve was deceived by Satan's clever lies, your thought will be corrected. Did you see that? That's what I'm going to. So what corrupts your thought? Yes. So how does it corrupt? So what's it? The reason why you begin to think in that dirty, useless, wicked, paralyzing way is because Satan lied to you and you bought it. So Satan lies are his tools for corrupting our mind and holding you in captivity. Okay, let, this is what it looks like. Let, let, me, get, um, let me get someone, you know. Um, can I get a lady to volunteer? You know, yeah. Maybe, maybe, yeah. Yeah, just because I like your glasses. Yeah, over here. Just because I like your glasses. Okay, great. Oh, wow, this is great. So, this lady, I believe that you are single? Yes, sir. Okay. So, this lady is here. Remember what we're applying to relationship. And she's praying for a godly man to marry. And Satan wants to come to her. So, Satan lies to her. And what does it tell you? Why does it say you can't get married? What does it tell you? Right now, it can't get to me. It can't get, but before, what did he used to tell you? Let me give the microphone. What did he used to tell you? So, right now, you know him, right? You do know his tricks. You've been taught in harvesters. Now you know his tricks. Yeah. So use the microphone. Yeah. Uh, what What is to tell you why you can't get married or be happy in marriage? You might not see a man that will love you. Good. So Satan tells you you will not see a man. So this is this thing. Is what is the line? He uses this thing to cover you. So where is the man in marriage? Where is the man in marriage? Where's the box? Where's the box? Yeah. So this is what she's praying for. And this is what she wants. And Satan tells her that lie and use that lie to cover her. You know, come closer. Cover her. She's now 
confined. No matter what she does, she can never reach it. Because there's a lie. This, this thing is a corruption. This thing is a corruption. So she was struggling. Try, try to come forward. She, you, know, you see, she's trying to break through. She can't. The question is this. What lie has Satan used to build a barrier around you? And I'm going to ask you just now. And you know, I wish Satan stops here. He doesn't stop here. Second Corinthians chapter 11. Let, let's go. Second Corinthians chapter 11. Let's see what it says again. Let's see what it is. Depression translation. Let's go. I want to start bringing the blocks. Yeah. He says, I'm afraid that Satan, as Eve was deceived. Take note. How was it deceived? He was deceived by Satan's clever lie. You know why they are clever? You will never even know someone is lying to you. You will think you are the one thinking it. You will not know that these are powerful suggestions of the devil. Please bring the blocks. Bring the blocks. He says, then your thought, but the way you will know is that your thought will be what? Corrupted. And it doesn't stop there. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Go to verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4. You can leave it at TPT. Yeah, just put it in front of her here. Yeah. Guys, you've worked so much today. Maybe you should just do only one set. Just one set is good. Just one set. Yeah. So that we don't do too much. So, see what the Bible says here. Verse 4. Verse 3 to 4. It says, Though we walk, live in the natural, we do not walk against a military campaign employing human wisdom. Using manipulation to achieve our own. Instead, our spiritual weapons are energized with divine power to effectively dismantle. The defense, I think we're fine. Somewhere so, towards fine now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you know, you know what? You know initially, eh? You know initially, she could see. As things happen, things happen in your life. Say that we're breathing one block at a time. We I put this block there. After you break up, you will put another block to convince you about what he has said. I told you nobody will marry you. Mm. That's why it cannot broke your heart. Then, then something will happen in your family with your mom. He says, I told you, okay, it will be building the block around you until you cannot see the truth again. You know, at one level, she could see what she was believing God for. The bag. Can you see the bag again right now? You know why? The point where you cannot see what you believe in God for is the point where you give up and lose it because it's no longer real to you. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. You don't know, because you're just struggling. Your mind is, at this point, your mind is totally black. And that's why you get people say that, I can never have a good marriage. I will never be happy. I'm depressed. I will never succeed. Those are the lies of Satan. See what the Bible says, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Oh, let's go quickly. Verse, we're reading verse 4. Give, go to verse 5. Yeah. It says, look at what it says. We can demolish every deceptive fantasies. These are thoughts that oppose God's God and every arrogant attitude that is raised up in defiance of the true knowledge of God. We're captured like prisoners. Say what next then. It says, what, what do we do? We captured like prisoners. What do we capture? Every thought and insist it bows to the obedience of the anointed one. So when the thought says, no one will love me, say, shut up. I arrest you. You will now bow. What will you bow to? That what you bow to what God says. That when he made me, he made me male and female. My own is settled. Are you getting it? So that's what he says. Thank you. You can, you can take this away. Thank you, my sister. You can come out. So the challenge is that most of you go back inside. Most of you, 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 you know, the this is a challenge. Most of you are inside the cage. And, you know, they start telling you things like, um, when you want to get a guy, do this, do this. You are inside the cage. They are talking to you as if you are free. See, you know, you're inside the, um, your marriage, do this, do this. You are inside the cage. The first thing you have to do, that's why all those things when you do it never works. Because you are in, an, in a mental cage that is chaining you, first of all. The first thing is to come out of that cage first. Be in a better mental state and you'll get that done. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Alright, you can help me dismantle this. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Let me just ask a question before why they're dismantling it. What are the lies? What are the clever lies Satan has told you about your marriage? About your relationship? Get, get, who has a microphone? Who has a microphone? Yeah, what are the clever lies he's told you? Yeah, hands up please. 
she's told yeah thank you oh my brother you're so kind yeah what are the clever lies Satan has told you like he gave me a particular amount of money that I will have before I can get married wow it was now so real that I met someone in this church like so they are already in that level so he's not telling me you see he's not even married you can see you can see so I should not get married until so, so Satan t- so the thought is that if you don't have this amount of money no. you cannot get what married don't move close <laughs> you will not believe it when I met my wife my marriage budget was 250,000 there I will tell you the reason why. I will tell you the reason why. It was simple. I'm going to call all of you to feed you. Then we don't have a house to live in. So I had a choice. I'm going to rent a house. Yeah, I'm going to rent a house, put all the things in the house, buy an extra car, and do a wedding. So I thought it I'll do a wedding maybe Sunday after church. You know, 50 or 200 of us. we have dinner and we go away. Okay, my wedding, were you there? What about my wedding? My wedding? What are they now? Yes. Let me tell you something. Don't make what is not important important to you. Yes. Okay, all of you that spent 50 million, 100 million, where is it? Where is it? You say, the photographer is the best photographer. The album, have you looked through it? Yes. You don't have album yet in the house if you can afford it there's nothing wrong with it but why struggle for what does not matter okay good thank you thank you that's one what are the thoughts that satan keeps telling you what are the clever thoughts that he keeps telling you yes clever thoughts yeah there's, there's a lady over there yeah go ahead hi church hello he says things like you're too independent to find a man that's going to care for you wow yeah but some men are, how many men want someone that you can care for that is independent? That can take care of herself. Wave your hands if you're a man like that. Just wave your hands. Just wave your hands. Look at all the men waving at you. Look at all the men. They all like you already. They have money. Can I get your number? What? You can't see her. Tell me, why can't you see her? What? The men. Okay, no, no, no. At least if they've seen her, that's fine. Praise God. But clever lies. But you know the thing? Once you think that way, then you become captive. That's what I'm going to. Okay, let's take two more. Two more com- conversations. What clever lies does Satan tell you? Yeah, this lady over here. The, no, no, come, come, Truman. There's in front here. In front here. Oh, okay, yeah, in front here. Yeah. What clever lie? Okay, so mine is not relationship. It's career related. It's career, yes. Yes. Um, so I lost my job sometime. In so tell 20. me the lie. Just tell me the lie. The lie was that I was never going to get any job past 250K. You will never get a good job past 250K? Past 250K, and I'll never go past entry level. Wow. Yeah, but right now I'm, a, I'm the <laughs> head of a team in a Shut tech up, up. Pepe is rolling. International tech company, yes. Praise God. Yeah. What other line? What other line? Yes. There's a lady over there. Yeah. Um, the lie is that I don't look good enough for someone to love me. You're not good enough. Can you stand? What do you think they are saying? No, speak to me. What do you think they are saying? That it's a lie. That what? That it's a lie that I don't look good. What is it? That it's a lie that I don't look good. That you expect. That's what they are saying. They're like, hey, see this speck. Praise God. Did you notice something? A lie can be useless. But it will become effective if you believe it. Can you see this speck? Saying that I'm not good. Ah. When people are praying that they want to have your teeth, your face, your ah, skin. All the other things that in... Hey. hey. But look at what I'm saying. What I'm saying to you. A lie does not have to be true to be effective. For example, if I say there's a snake there, you will jump up. But there's no snake. Why did you jump up? The work is done. I've made you afraid. You must remember, a lie does not have to be true to be effective. A lie is a lie. Many people dated people that were liars. 
Was it not effective? It was effective. You fell in love with someone that was not there. The day you now knew him or knew her, you're like, wow. But as soon the, the light was effective, you responded. You say, you didn't, you didn't have anything. They say, um, when I take to my um, Mauritius, we'll go to say, yes. You know, you're even telling your friends that we're going to Mauritius. Meanwhile, the guy has no job. The guy is his brother's own. The house is his brother's own. But the light was effective. So what I'm saying to you is that the fact that something is effective on me is true. Praise God. I said, praise God. Hallelujah. So, so, so great. So many lies, many lies. Many lies I said, um, what do you call it? I can't get someone better than my ex. How many of you are on that boat? Wave. Wave. It's a lie that you can't get so better than your ex. One of our pastors ought to say something. He was on that boat. Yeah, tell me. You were in that place in your life at some point. Yes, sir. Yeah. And what did that do to you? Uh, it just didn't... Uh, at, at some point, you even begged this girl to marry you, you okay. know. <laughs> even your mother begged this little girl. <laughs> Hold on. I just want to say, even just imagine the mother went and begged. Looking back, do you miss it? Nope. <laughs> this person they beg now, has he begged you directly or indirectly? <laughs> Let me say something to you. God will sort everyone out. Because I, you know, this is international, so I know the person is not even someone that I, I've never met the person physically who is talking about, but I know the stories. So the story that I will never find someone better than this. Someone will only marry me out of pity. Someone will only marry me out of what? Pity. And those, the, what I want to know that this thought begins to affect, it corrupts your mind. That's what I'm going to. It actually corrupts your mind. Tell me, what, tell me what's going on with you. I want, I want her to tell me she's crying. I want her to tell me. Yeah, what's going on with you? It's okay. It's okay to cry. This is church. Where else do you cry? Yeah, it's better to cry in church than to cry in another person in the house of pain. Give her the microphone. Sometimes that crying is a way of just letting out some things. You must learn not to deny your emotions. Understand them. Yeah. It's okay. And I love the fact that in our church we're vulnerable. You know, I was just in tears so many times. I was in tears. Yeah. Yeah, so I also cry. So tell me what's going through your mind. And the reason why I want to hear this story is that the day she eventually gets married and she's given a testimony, we're able to chronicle all the videos. We're like, hello, look at you. Yeah, tell me. I can't believe I'm shaking because I like the microphone, like you said last time. Yeah, just hold it closer to your mouth. <laughs> I, I don't even know where to start from. Just hold the microphone closer so I can hear um, you. Feeling less of myself. I'm not what? enough. Feeling less of myself. I'm not enough. I can't get better. <sighs> the thing, the, this is the thing. Once you buy the lie, and you know, you know, last week I spoke a lot about it in terms of losing weight. Once you buy the lie, the lie incapacitates you. That's all I'm saying. You just say that you can't get better, and you accept it. Praise God. All right, so let's go. Let's go. Have you picked someone on your on your role, your role captain? Pick your role captain, please. If you don't have a role captain, you know, yeah. So let's turn. Second Kings chapter four, verse one. We just have ten more minutes to the end of the service. Second Kings chapter four, verse one. Ten minutes. This is the only church where people are always like, "We want to stay. We want to stay. You need to go. You need to go." Can you believe this? 
Even online, they're like, no, 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 no. What is that? The what? Okay. Second Kings chapter 4. Second Kings chapter 4. So everybody pick a role captain. Um, Pastor Tywo, let me go around, make sure that every role has a captain. Yeah, because I'm going to get their names and the numbers. I'm going to get names and numbers of the role captains, just the role captains. Yeah, because today, let me tell you something. We're coming to the end of the teaching. So all of the other things are going to be applications, applications, and application needs supervision. Uh-huh. Yeah. Left and right, so you're only doing middle, left and right, you know, yeah. Yeah, okay. Praise God. Sister John, Pastor John, let me get a list so I can get the role and the names. Yeah, the role captains. All right. Okay, so, ever look up here while we're doing that. I, I, don't, I don't want to lose the I'm very serious. I'm very, very serious. So, the question is this. When Satan tells you these lies and you are in a state of frustration and focus, how do you change it? That's what I'm going to. Today, I want to just show you something quickly here. How do you change it? Okay. One, how do you change that lie? One of the things you do is by asking questions that redirect your focus. Second Kings chapter 4. Let's see it in the Bible. Second Kings chapter 4, verse 1. Second Kings chapter 4, verse 1. The Bible says, And a certain woman of the wives of the prophets said unto Elisha, My husband is dead, and knowest not that thy servant did fear the Lord. And thou know your father, thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take him and my two sons to be bought men. And she, so what she was doing was that she was complaining, this not working out, this is terrible, this is terrible, this is terrible. Guess what Elisha said? Well, how did Elisha change a state of frustration? Because she was frustrated. You know what she was saying? She said that, you know that my, sub, your, my husband was a prophet. He was a honest man. He served God. We broke. They want to take my children right now. I'm frustrated. What did, how did Elijah change her frustration state? See what Elijah said. Verse 2, Elijah said to her, what, what did he say? What shall I what? Do for thee. First of all, Elijah wanted her to have clarity. That's the first thing. Wanted her to have what clarity. The second thing is that what did he say? Tell me what? So, the second thing is this. These two things Elijah did. Number one, Elijah redirected her by asking questions. Okay, who has, who here has a very terrible negative message about your relationship or all that? Let's work with you. Let's work with you. You do? Okay, give her the microphone. You do? Yeah. Something you feel that's negative, not something that you currently feel negative about it. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, thanks. No, 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 not her. Two rows behind. Yeah, thank you. Tell me. Okay, so I... I feel like nothing has ever worked out, so I would never get anybody better than the previous person. So, tell me what you feel. You feel as if nothing has ever worked out in relationship, right? Yeah. Yes or no? Yes. And what does that mean to you? It means that it can never work out. It will never work out. So, you'll never be married. Is that how you feel? Yeah, that's okay, good. actually how I feel. Okay, good. Good. So, how many people... So, I can never be married. That's, that's yeah. true. Mm. great because nothing has ever worked out nothing mm. has ever worked out what about nothing has ever worked out explain that to me it's so horrible that <laughs> that's why I'm here it's okay Shh. let her have a moment it's okay Okay, talk, talk now. It's all horrible that um, I'm really too young for like everything I've been through. And what have you been through? So much. So much what is I, so much? I can't even begin to tell. The story. You have to begin to tell me. It's so much. So much. What is so much? Yeah. Watching my mom at 12, watching my mom die right in my, in my arms. And okay. She died in your hands. Yes, I was okay. twelve. So and okay. after then, I've I've 
gone through like a, I had a very rough time growing up and what rough time did you have growing up school and uh, my work did, did you graduate yes I did. you did yeah okay I, I worked I work hard towards a thing and it eventually crashes from what did you work hard towards there was a time I had a studio in Port Harcourt before like I it crashed to, what yeah. else have you worked at that that's crashed a, a whole lot of things they just made this five the studio is one what's the second one <laughs> not up to five but not they up meant, to five. They meant a lot. But you said a lot of things. Yeah. Question, you went to school. Yes. Anything less than five, is that a lot? Not really. Huh? Not really. Huh? Not really. Not really. So why did you say a lot? Because it meant a lot to me. No, 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 no. It meant a lot to me and a lot of things feel that to different things. Yeah. I agree to you, with you that it meant a lot to you. I'm only showing you that when you say a lot has not worked, it's not really a lot. Because I say you should just count now. You've told me two things. Number one, going through school was difficult. You lost your mom at 12 and she died in your hands. And the third thing that there was a studio that did not work out. Three things. Okay, what are other things that did not work? Okay, relationship. Like, the, I, I gave like three years of my life to somebody and at the end, the family said I was a witch. The and family was, said you were a witch? Yeah, okay, they okay said good. I was the one making their son not to progress. And eventually, my mom found out about this thing and she, she, okay, I have a foster mom and she found out about this thing and. It got her really angry that she almost threw me out of the house. Okay, so let me help you with something. So that's the fourth thing. The reason why I'm saying that, that you've not listed up to 10. And the truth is that I'm not sure you have up to 10. If you want to change your life, watch the language you use to decide your emotions. When you say, nothing works. I've done everything. A lot is not working. From your conversation now, she's gone through a lot of things. Right? She's gone through a lot of pain. But is it true that a lot has not been working? No. My sister, how many of you were here, you couldn't finish school at some point because your parents were dead or they couldn't? Hands up. Look, you are their senior. You did better. They wish they had the opportunity. So, the thing is this. This is the thing. The thing is, and I'm just showing you. So, let me tell you. So, the first question is that. This is my first question. It's usually that a lot has not been working. Is that really true? No. No. Did you see this? I'm using questions to change the way she thinks. Some things have not been working. Are those things up to 50%? They are never up to 50%. So few things have not been working. When I know few things have not been working, I'm just like every other person here. All of you here, if everything in your life is working, stand up. Let me sit down because it's everything that my life is not working. Let me... <laughs> because I, I know myself, Truma is standing up because everything in life is working. I know that everything in my own life is not working. There are things I'm praying about. So, question, it's just a normal human experiences, experience rather, that you will know that there are few things in my life that are not working. But how do you change your focus? By asking yourself what I call empowering questions. See what, go back to the scripture. See, the woman came and said, the woman started like you. She felt as if my husband, see what the woman said. Listen, verse 1. I want to read it and this woman sounds like you. Verse 1. A woman said, oh, the woman, I'm just jumping. Then, boom. My servant is dead. Just like he said, my mom is dead. Secondly, you know my servant David Lord, we're prayerful. Why is this happening to us? Thirdly, the creditors were owing money. Then fourthly, they have come to take my children at, because we guaranteed them with my children. So the woman was in a similar state like you. Guess what Elijah did? Elijah said, first of all, verse 2. He said, what do you want me to do? Because every time you're in a state of frustration, just ask yourself, where's clarity? What do you want? The reason why is that you can get in a state and be fighting and not know what you're fighting for again. How many of you were arguing about something and you forgot what you're arguing about? Where you were fighting to win the argument? Now you know what it is. See the next thing Elisha said. Elisha now said, see what the change focus. The woman said, nothing is working. The man said, excuse me, woman, what do you have in your house? And the woman said, oh, next thing, I have not anything. The woman went back to a state of frustration where she doesn't see any good. I have not anything but just a useless pot of oil. 
Elisha said, what you have is enough. I'm only showing you this. When you want to change the state of frustration, you need to begin to ask yourself the question. Someone says, you can never marry at 40. Ask yourself, is this the truth? Are there people that married at 40? You've heard from this testimony. Why would I be different? The voice says, nobody will ever love you. Say, is this the truth? People have loved me before. Other people even love me right now. At least my pastor loves me. So how can I say nobody will love me? So when you have, the reason why is that the way Satan built a stronghold is to keep using bad experiences and quotes to be building that the way you destroy it is by asking it empowering not destructive question empowering there are questions that will destroy you why me why is god punishing me those questions will lead you down the drain you need to ask yourself empowering question so you went through a breakup don't say why me rather ask yourself what did i learn the questions will bring you out from the pits empowering questions will bring you out from the pits Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. So how do you come out of a state of frustration? By number one, you change your focus by, change, by asking yourself empowering questions. What I say, you change your focus. So the reason why you're frustrated, you're focused on something, you change your focus by asking yourself what empowering questions. Okay, let's get some example of empowering questions. Tell me something you ask yourself now when you feel frustrated. Tell me something. Yeah. Tell me something you ask yourself. Yes, thank you. Questions. You need to. This is my own question. Oh, yeah. Tell me. Tell okay, me, lady. So, I. No, you're meant to answer my question. Yes. Are you answering my question? Yes, I am. Okay. What I empowering should... question are you going to ask yourself? How do I make myself a better person? Wow. Great. Because I am. How How does this make me better? That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Which other empowering question are you going to ask? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. The, who has the microphone here? Yeah, thank, this is beautiful. Yeah. There's a lady here. Yeah. What empire question are you going to ask yourself? I ask myself, um, what have you not done? What thing you did wrong? And what did you learn from the thing that you Exactly. Did what did you learn from this? The reason why is that once pain can become less since they become less painful. Great. Great. Who else? Who else? Yes. Yeah. There's a lady in black here. What can you learn? Um, what aspect of my life is working well? What am I thankful for? What am I grateful for? So, for example, I did this guy for... So this guy, you did for three years. They said you're a witch. Ah, what are you grateful for? There'll be something to be grateful for about that. I want to ask you something. You should be grateful you didn't marry into that family. And they said to when you were married. Did you see how everybody say, ah, thank God, thank God. You saw everybody was happy for you that, ah, you're, you should be grateful that you broke the relationship on time. Because if you were, if you had a child and you're in that home and they say you're a witch, the koboko they will use on you. The reason, so listen to me. Someone says, I feel a certain way. So you're like, in this scripture, you can be like that man that felt, that woman that felt depressed, didn't feel okay. You need to ask yourself, what am I grateful for? Ask yourself, what is this teaching me? But why are you shaking your head? Why are you shaking your head? Something came to your mind? Okay. You want to say something? Yeah. Go ahead. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, I usually ask, first thing I'll ask myself is, what is the worst case scenario in this situation? Wow. Yeah. It's just telling yourself, it could have gotten worse. Some people lose their life in the process. Some people become mental in the process. It couldn't have gotten worse. So I'm grateful it didn't get worse that I was here. Someone said, um, um, my girlfriend broke up with me because we are broke. I thank God that I didn't marry her. Because if I'd married her, would she have left the marriage? Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Were, were you Today is a very simple lesson, though, but it's an application lesson. How do you change your focus? By asking yourself empowering questions. How do you change your focus? By asking yourself empowering questions. So, 
Let, let's take some terrible case scenarios. Number one, you went through a divorce. Ah, thank God that it was a divorce I had that my life was not destroyed. At least I came out of it. You know, people came out of divorce that they're not mentally stable. Okay. You went through, give me another situation. You lost a baby. Ah, if you lost a baby, at least I can get pregnant. I can get pregnant again. And because at least it's proven that I can get pregnant. I can get pregnant what? Again. Okay. What else? What? What? You lost investment. Ah, if I lost investment, life is not lost. It's investment that is lost. When health is lost, all is lost. So if I lost money, I can make money. Apart from that, losing that money taught me something. What did it teach me? Someone say hallelujah. So the reason I'm saying so is that the more... Give me three things you you should not be asking yourself when things happen. Three things you should not be asking yourself. Why me? Those questions will lead down the drain. God, why are you punishing me? What else? Why is my life like this? Why does this always happen to me? Watch the word. Why does this always happen to me? I've done everything. You, you, you see, I've done everything. Why are they always treating me this way? Because there's nothing like why are they always treating me this way? It's just three or four people that treated you in a certain way, and that's it. Are you learning something today? Is it helpful? And even in the marriage, this is what destroys a marriage when you tell your partner, you always do this because your partner does not always do it. It does it often, but it's not always. Because if it's always, you'll not be in that marriage. Someone say hallelujah. Okay, so everybody bring out your barrier and pen. Let's take out our assignment. Yes, this is what I want to discuss. So that we can, because I said this week and next week is application. I thought we were going to close this week, but we want to do the application. So uh, that's why I want everybody to give me their names. Yeah, just the leader's names. There's a paper passing on, the, on each of the roles. Is there a paper passing on this role also? Is there people on this role? There's no one on this row. There needs to be one on this row. It needs to be one, two, three, four, five. Five rows. Oh, this person. Okay. Okay, everybody will cover like this. Well, hope that not be too much for one person. It just solve. Okay, good. If it just solve. I just want to make sure all of you get, get in. So, so the question you need to ask yourself, number one, what... So this is what I'm saying. Everybody stand up. I, I, I want to say this when you're standing. Yeah. What pain do I associate with relationship, marriage, men or women? That's the first question. What pain do I associate? Because the real thing is that I wanted to get some help. So I just, I just can't teach, 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 teach. This has to. And, it, and on the group, you guys have to discuss. You guys have to discuss. What pain do you associate? And if your group does very well, I will come and join to discuss. You know. Yeah. What pain do I associate with relationship, marriage, singles, um, men or women? Number two. Number two is a very powerful question. Who knows? So, wh- what's the pleasure I'm missing out on? The reason why is that if you don't have a reason to change the pain, you will not change it. So, tell me, you've worked a lot on, your, you know, on yourself. And you, why, why have you done that this year? Come and tell me. Come. Yeah, come. Yeah. Why are you looking back? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know you. Yeah, yeah. Just come, come. Now you wear dresses. You wear earrings. Yeah, come. Yeah. Come and tell me. Why have you done that this year? So why have you done that this year? Um. Don't come with bad eye. That's not good. I love you. What? You want to whisper in my ear? Okay, whisper in my ear. Yeah. <laughs> Your whisper was very loud. The reason I wrote down is because I just feel like it's best to try new things for me to get new results. Wow, good. Why did you want to get new? Why? How was that important to you? Um, because um, I'm tired of feeling the same way I feel. It's like when you keep doing the same thing. It's what, what, okay. what way did you feel? Okay, let me see. So let's go one by one. Yeah. All right. Okay, so I was saying that I'm tired of doing the same thing over and over again. You wanted new results. Yes, yes. Why did you want new results? Um, spicing up my life, want to try new things. Cause Why do you want to try new things? 